Hey guys and welcome to Slasher X Games. So a while back I did a tutorial on draggable objects, but I didn't show you guys how to make those objects snap to a grid when you drag them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. It's actually very simple to do. I'm going to be covering some of the logic to do with the draggable code. We're going to be improving that slightly, removing things that we don't need. And then finally, adding the function that snaps everything up. Make sure it doesn't overlap the grid area. So let's jump straight into the code. I'm going to show you how to do this. All right, so here we are in somewhat of a bare bones project. We've got the potion sprites, uh, four of them right over there. We've got the backdrop, which is the grid. We've got the draggable, which is just empty. And it's been assigned that sprite. We must remember to make sure that we set the speed to zero. And then our game world looks just like this. We've got some potions sitting on that grid and when we move them we wanted to do this in real time so as the player is moving his potions around we want them to jump from grid space to grid space without going in between and overlapping this grid area just like that so take note of the snap x and snap y we'll be using those values later in a special function so in object draggable let's first add a create event and we need to set the image speed to zero. I also want to randomize our seed because I'm going to be giving it a random image index. Then I create a variable called grabbed, set it to false. I'm also going to create two variables here, xx and yy, set them both to zero and be using those later. All right, that is our create event sorted. Let's do the mouse left pressed event next. Grab because true. Okay, the player is now holding on. I'm going to set the depth to minus one so we can see the selected potion being hovered above the rest if the user moves that around. Next, I'm going to get the relative click position. And we're going to store those in xx and yy. So xx equals the current x value. We're going to minus the mouse x. And yy is going to equal the y value minus the mouse y. So now that we've got that set, let's do the left released. Right over there. Obviously grabbed equals false. And let's set the depth back to zero. Simple as that. That's all the left release does. It's the actual step event that does all the magic. So we're gonna say, well, if I'm grabbed, do some magic. Now before I had the X and Y coordinates set to the mouse X, plus the relative click position, like this. But in doing so, the draggable, or the potion in this case, will pretty much update every step. So it'll move one pixel by one pixel, and in real time, to where the mouse is moving. But we want it to snap to the grid, so to make that happen, we're gonna introduce a new function called move snap. So I'm gonna push F1 on this one, see where it goes. Search, move, snap okay I might need to add an underscore to that there we go move snap so this says it snaps the player or object really to the nearest position on a grid with cells of a given size so you've got your h snap and your v snap so you've got the horizontal snapping which is the size and pixels between the cells and the vertical snapping is just the opposite this function is used to snap the instance to a grid of a given size. Now this grid is invisible, um, it's determined by the pixels you give hsnap and vsnap. It'll be snapped to the nearest corresponding position on the invisible grid that the hsnap and vsnap values define. So in this case, the above code checks all instances of object pieces to see if they are snapped to the grid of 32 by 32, and if they're not snapped, then it snaps them to the nearest position in that grid. So that's actually quite fun. Only here, place snapped is the one that um, you can use to see if it's snapped to the closest 32 by 32. So that's also quite useful. So let's use that quick. Let's say move snap. And now let's go back to our game world. Now we want the space between each of these, right over there. We want it to fit inside these cells. So I've got 180 by 180. If we go to our potion, anything above 165 will work nicely. So if I say 166 on here, it may not fit nicely with our background but you'll notice that these won't overlap see still looks pretty cool so you've got to design your background depending on the snap you're using 
So in my case, I used a 180 to give it a bit more space in between each one. And this is exactly what it's going to look like when we run it. Uh, just like that. Cool. Very, very straightforward stuff. Okay, so let's go back to the draggable into the step event. And let's put 180, 180. Then let's save and see what happens. Okay, so here we are. So we can see these have been assigned random sprites, and if I drag them, that's awesome. They jump to the grid's position without overlapping slightly over the grid or each other. Simple as that. So hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you like what I'm doing here, please check out my Patreon campaign. Project files for this tutorial are in the description. $4 patrons get access to Game Maker Studio 2 files, so that's quite exciting. You can also find me on various social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, things like that. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.